Hi, my name is Steve Renner. I'm a resident of Alton for the last six and a half years and the parent of two children here at Alton Central School. I'm also a volunteer as a communications coordinator for the Alton Central School Buildings and Crowns Committee. And I'm here today to take you on a guided tour of Alton Central School to show you some of the recent improvements made to the school and as well as some of the long-standing concerns, including the modular units here that we have at Alton Central. This is the first of four modular units that we will be addressing today. As you can see, this one's right at the main entrance of the school. And uh, we're going to take a look inside to look at some of the issues concerning this modular. We're inside that front modular outside the main entryway. And just to show one of the f issues with this one is that it is placed over top of a, the grease receptacle for the kitchen. Uh, so there is a drain line that comes out and ends underneath this modular into a large tank, which creates some odor problems as well as maybe some public health issues. Um, that main line is corroded to the point that any further maintenance on that line is not possible at this point. Um, so there you can see the, the access hole in the floor. The other thing to talk about on this modular is that this structure is over 25 years old. There is not a uh, significant amount of natural lighting that's here, which has been shown to increase student improvement uh, the more natural light that they have access to during uh, classes. We're in the middle school boys restroom. This restroom was renovated in 2010 to make it much more efficient to maintain uh, with touchless fixtures and also ones that were less water consumptive. Some of the prior fixtures that are here and in the other bathrooms use five to six gallons per flush. These use less than two. This would be part of the building that would not be affected by the current proposed renovation project. We're standing near the exit that the fourth graders and anyone who uses the Title I or special ed programs would use to access their modular classrooms. Uh, as you can see, it's a rather long walk from here to the fourth grade modulars. Uh, one of the problems with the current modulars is there are no restroom facilities. Uh, any future modulars that would need to be purchased and installed here at Alton Central if the renovation is not completed in a timely manner uh, would require that bathrooms be installed to those modular units, which would require running plumbing and drain lines from roughly where we're standing out to those uh, por uh, portable classrooms. The other requirement is that this walkway would need to be covered year round with something a permanent structure. Uh, as again, we noted with the other classrooms, there are very few windows to allow natural lighting. Uh, and each building also has their own heating and sometimes cooling systems. This is the restroom in the elementary school wing. This was built in roughly the 1960s. We're going to take a look at how these fixtures compare to some of those improvements made in the middle school wing. So we're in the boys' restroom in that elementary school wing, again, the 1960s bathroom. Uh, as you can see, compared to the middle school wing, these are not touchless fixtures. Uh, the toilets and urinals are all of the old high flow, uh, hands required type. Um, you can tell as well that this bathroom is just in need of some general cosmetic work as well as we look at cracked tiles, stained floors, uh, and other wear and tear sorts of issues. We are in a third grade classroom that is affected by, again, one of the other main drain lines that does not function uh, properly. We're in a third grade classroom and the two adjacent classrooms that include first grade and preschool are also affected. As part of the renovation project, those main drain lines would need to be dug up and replaced. Uh, there is a noticeable sulfur or rotten egg smell when you come into this building as a result of those non-functioning drain lines. These are classrooms where students do occasionally need to be relocated when that smell becomes overwhelming and actual materials have bubbled up out of these sinks in past uh, months. We are standing in a small uh, access way from the elementary school that connects to the art and music areas that the students routinely use. Uh, again, we're here to talk about some of the security concerns in the building. We have some, obviously, with the fourth graders and special ed students moving between modulars and the main building to use restrooms. Here we have two doors that aren't always securely locked and are also uncovered. Part of the renovation plan would be to include, enclose this walkway, giving uh, added security to our students as they move back and forth between classrooms. 
I'm standing behind the school at uh, the pickup and um, drop off area that is used two times a day. Uh, this area would be covered if the renovation project moves forward so that the students will have uh, a, a sheltered area to gather both before and after school while they're waiting for their grown-ups. Uh, the parking lot will be renovated as well. It would made, be made clear that there would be a one-way pickup and drop-off loop. Although there have been improvements made in recent years, this is still sometimes confusing for parents. The parking lot will also be expanded to include almost twice as many cars as it does now by adding parking lots along the uh, egress road here behind the school. We are now in a fifth grade classroom in the 1950s wing of Alton Central School and we're here to take a look at the old windows. Uh, these are single pane windows. These, this entire wing actually would be torn down and replaced with a three-story structure. More on that later. However, part of the renovation project would be to replace all of these single pane windows throughout the school with a double pane, double pane low R rated eff energy efficient window. Welcome to the Alston Central School Cafeteria. This is where students have lunch. There are currently four sessions, four lunch periods each day. If the renovation project is approved, that can be reduced to three lunch periods a day, which increases the flexibility in academic scheduling, uh, as well as making it a little bit easier on the kitchen staff here. Should the gym warrant article pass, th the back half or this room will actually be renovated to become kitchen and food storage space and the existing multi-purpose gymnasium would serve as the cafeteria. If the gym article does not pass, the rooms immediately behind this, three classrooms and the teacher's lunch area will be removed to expand the cafeteria and those classrooms will be relocated to a new area of the building. We are in the storage locker uh, that formerly was, a, was the locker room for the Alton uh, sports teams. This is where athletic equipment is currently stored. Uh, as you can see as you went by, the former shower room is used to store gymnastics padding. And actually behind the camera, which you're not able to see right now, is a non-functioning toilet and sink. Uh, this room frequently doesn't necessarily smell like gym equipment, but does smell a little bit like uh, backed up sewer from time to time. Um, and it's probably not the most sanitary conditions for keeping athletic equipment. We are in the Alton Central School. Uh, what I like to refer to as a multi-purpose room. It does serve primarily as a gym for athletic uh, teams as well as routine gym classes. However, it's not only used for that. As you can see, there is a stage here. It is where the performances for uh, school plays are done as well as some assemblies as well. So this room uh, is part of the older section of the school and is definitely in need of some some upgrades. Uh, there were recent upgrades done in 2010 uh, where the ceiling was refinished and some energy efficient lighting was installed uh, along with automatic sensors that these lights will turn off when sections of the room or the entire room are not in use. This would become the cafeteria auditorium and also be available to, for use as a gym and a continued multi-space at Alton Central School. I would like to introduce Mr. Steve Miller, who's going to offer an alternate uh, view of this renovation project. Thank you, Steve. I would like to begin by saying thank you to both uh, Bob and Mary, um, to Bob and Mary B. Longabaugh for the opportunity to present this opposing viewpoint concerning one of the most important issues being presented before the voters of Alton in the last seven years. I also offer congratulations to our new principal, Sidney Leggett, who is absolutely up to the challenge of taking Alton Central School to the new level, to the next level. Good luck, Sidney. Thank you. I represent a significant number of Alton taxpayers, town elected officials, and concerned citizens of Alton. They have asked me to explain our concerns concerning the school board's primary intention to raise and spend $21,862,555 through the issuance of up to 20 years of additional debt to be paid annually by you and me through increased property taxes and eventual growing assessments needed to generate additional revenue. First, we're adamant that the Alton Central School needs either to be replaced or is in dire need of significant renovation. This you're witnessing yourself. 
The facility has been poorly maintained with lack of necessary preventive maintenance, improper repairs being made, and the lack of a quality long-term facilities management program. Some bathrooms are an embarrassment, the windows need work, and the roof must be regularly monitored. Everybody is in agreement. That being said, we do not believe that the building as it currently exists has prevented any child from attending college, getting a decent job, being promoted to Prospect Mountain High School, or prevented from attending a top, grade, top trade school. What it might have facilitated is a decision by some parents to homeschool or not. Considering the amount of tax dollars we currently spend on our child, children's education, at Alton Central School it is $14,081 per student, and that is 7.3% higher than the state average. The students and the taxpayers certainly deserve better. The cost has gone up 40% in the last five years, while enrollment has decreased in the same period. At this rate, our school budget would double every nine years. Why then does it not make sense to spend $22 million and to do it today? This is the absolute wrong economic environment to saddle the Alton taxpayer with more debt when, all, when most of us were expecting meaningful tax relief. We admonish our lawmakers for increasing state and national debt during a poor economic environment, but have little problem increasing our own debt obligation when it comes to our own house. Alton is experiencing a record number of foreclosures and short sales. The Alton tax rate has gone up about 23% in the last five years, with a majority of the increase attributed to the school portion of our tax bill. That is double the CPI growth rate and more than most of our neighbor school systems who are holding the line and in many instances generating record budget cuts. Alton has significant unemployment, record foreclosures, etc., and most of all, record welfare requests. If you are fortunate to have a decent income or savings, then the luxury of being able to pay additional significant taxes is a non-event. Unfortunately, what the school board does not realize is that the average per capita income in Alton was $32,284 in 2010. Over 43% of the working population in Alton makes less than $50,000 a year. If you are a citizen relying on Social Security, then your income is closer to $18,000 a year, and even two Social Security checks present significant challenges. Third, unlike Prospect Mountain High School, the state will no longer pay 30 to 40 percent of the high building costs that it did when we built the uh, Prospect Mountain High School. The state is also shifting the retirement burden for school employees from the state to Alton uh, from approximately 9% to 13% of current uh, retirement funds. Uh, fourth, the projected enrollment data is wrong. The original student demographic constraint was suspect and was not adjusted to 725 until I questioned that data at a board meeting. Alton Central School student population was 603 after the high school students moved out and is currently at 545 uh, this February, this month. Not only is there no growth, but the student population is contracting at a 4% annual rate. Now, according to the National Center for Education Statistics, in their annual enrollment projections, enrollment in the New Hampshire elementary public schools is expected to decrease up to 5% by the year 2020. Query, why is the school board projecting a 33% increase while the U.S. Department of Education is expecting a decrease? The reason is that the New Hampshire population is aging, Alton births are down 31% since 2009, young people are moving out of the state, Alton is fast losing its tax advantage thanks to the school budget. $5 gasoline will mitigate migration to the Lakes region, which has right now stagnant industrial growth. We have, um, we have at best, seasonal unemployment, a seasonal unemployment advantage, and we have no mass transportation alternative. Six, the plans call for a third story that will be vacant and unfinished until we approach the projected 725 students.
If that does not happen, and the data says that it will not, then a, the mostly empty third floor fast becomes a very expensive storage space for a very long period of time. Seventh, the, the school board is requesting a second gymnasium. There's a separate war warrant article for $2,070,000 for an additional gymnasium that also would create more cafeteria space. Yes, it would still remain a second gym, both totaling over 10,000 square feet. The question is, does the town of Alton need three gymnasiums within a three-mile uh, radius? Eighth, there's no plan B. It's either $22 million or nothing. Ninth, in 10 years, Alton has the ability to buy out Bonstead share of the Prospect Mountain High School at a fair price determined by an impartial mediator. I don't know if that's the right solution or not, but if it is, then the problem's solved. In our opinion, it is our opinion that we need a new, renovated K-8, through but not today and not right now. Our neighboring SAU school boards are reducing their taxpayers' burden, not increasing it. Why? Because they understand when it is appropriate to be fiscally conservative. When the economy turns around, when Alton people are no longer losing their homes, and when Alton taxpayers can afford a $22 million commitment, it is the opinion of a significant number of Alton taxpayers that we do need, a, that we do need this new school, and we will fight to build it at that time. Uh, so, actually, so actually, in conclusion, everything you see here um, that um, ha that has been shown is, uh, and I've taken the walk around um, w uh, with these people is apps is absolutely correct and is absolutely something that we need, but it's something that we can afford to postpone for one or two years down the road. Thank you again for this opportunity. I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through the renovation proposal as it exists today from the Alton Central School Board and Buildings and Grounds Committee. The whole point of this renovation is to help the school to meet its mission statement of small enough to create a safe environment that inspires each child to excel. The main goal of this project and the main uh, that is our main goal of this project. 65% of the project costs go towards renovating the existing facility as it stands today. 35% of this project would go to expand or replace portions of the school within reason. The state guidelines are 30 square foot per student. So any of the new classrooms that would be constructed here at Alton Central School would technically house 30 students according to state standards. However, Alton School Board policy is to set those standards at a lower capacity. For fifth through eighth grade, it's 25 students per classroom. That would be a 900 square foot classroom. And for second through fourth grades, it's 22 students. Uh, these numbers are significantly lower than the state standards, but are, we are felt to be important for educational reasons to our students in Alton. Uh, taking a quick look at the elevations here, put together by the architect, just shows the building from various perspectives as it would look upon completion of the renovation pro uh, proposal. The next one up shows the whole site plan. Just a few uh, highlights for what you're seeing here. As we saw out back, the existing parking lot would be redone to create a clear one-way drop-off and access point here for students both in the morning and the afternoon basically replacing existing parking spaces and adding uh, roughly 80 more parking paved parking place spots to the back lot of the building almost doubling the existing parking the f all of the athletics field would be regraded and an irrigation system would be added while those fields were being replaced um, part of the rationale for that is to reduce overall maintenance costs and uh, ease of maintenance uh, as those athletic fields are used year-round. As you can see here, the, this iteration of the plan does not include the gymnasium, uh, the new gymnasium. This is where the new gym will be constructed if it's uh, voted upon by the vault voters of Alton. Um, if that happens, our existing multipurpose space would 
also take over the role of cafeteria in addition to auditorium, assembly area, and the gymna uh, functional gymnasium. As we pan up again to take a look at the actual floor plan, the detailed floor, floor plan, what you're seeing are areas in red would be newly constructed portions of the building. These would include the three-story wing that would replace the existing 1950s wing, the oldest wing where we saw the single pane windows. Um, these three stories are required to replace all four of the existing modular units that uh, are currently in the class in the school. This would bring all of our students and teachers into a secure building and would allow the building to have limited access um, to outsiders during the school day. Areas in blue would be portions of the building that would be retasked or significantly renovated as part of this process. This blue area over here would be a centralized administrative portion of the building, would include a larger uh, nurse's office, centralized student services, including conference rooms, the principal's office, vice principal's office, um, and other administrative staff. This would help to increase the efficiency of that staff without having to move throughout the building throughout the day. Also a portion here, this would be a secure double-doored vestibule where uh, any guests coming into the building would have to sign in first at that main office before be giving access to the building. This other red portion here would be a combined media center. Right now we have a middle school library and we have an elementary reading center. Both of these would be combined to, to produce this new a media center. Portions of this would be able to be closed off for individual classroom use while leaving the rest of the library accessible to students as they come and go throughout the day. Other things that were discussed were this connector which would now be enclosed and secured so students will be able to get access to the art and music rooms from the elementary school without having to take the long way around the maze of the building and also this covered parking area out back. So 65% of this project would be renovating the existing space. This would include new electrical, plumbing, and ventilation systems throughout the building. Right now the measured airflow in this building is approximately zero. Adding ventilation systems would help improve student performance, in, improve the climate control system of the building so that even heating and cooling can be uh, produce comfortable environments for the students and also in, increase healthy air quality. Just to address some of the concerns about the third floor space here, if the gym warrant article does not pass, portions of this third floor would be finished and utilized as classroom space. Part of the concern about this facility is that there's no room for expansion. And yes, Alton has gone through a hard time in the last few years, but according to a Lakes Region Planning Commission study issued in 2010, Alton was the second fastest growing town in the Lakes Region through the years 2008 in terms of building permits and population growth, despite the challenges in the economy. So part of that third floor would be an unfinished space, which would be used to house additional students when the population of Alton grows, or to house additional programs as they become required as part of the educational system uh, in the state of New Hampshire. I'd like to spend a few minutes telling you more about the financial impact of the passage of these three bonds that would have on our local tax rate. The total project cost is approximately $22 million. That would be for all three warrant articles, the main renovation project, the Budget Committee's recommended geothermal portion of that project, which was Article 2, and Article 3, which is the uh, addition of a gymnasium to Alton Central School. The tax effect of this, after the retirement of Prospect Mountain Bond in 2014, is shown on this graphic here. The median home price in Alton is $278,000. This means that 50% of the households in Alton are valued at less than $278,000 and half are valued at more. So for half of taxpayers in Alton, your additional annual taxes would go up by $186.26. That is a significant amount of money, but if we think of it as a real world sort of investment and break it down per week, it comes to $3.58. This is roughly the cost of a gallon of gas 
or the cost of a breakfast combination of Dunkin' Donuts. If we are able to make that type of investment in our students of $3.58 a week or less for half of the households in Alton, we can significantly upgrade and improve the educational opportunities that our students will have here.